In the last video, we started talking about our first major type of differential equation. And that's the differential equation whose solution are these exponentials. So the example we saw last time was an exponential growth. This was the bank account example. The idea being the rate of change of the value of the bank accounts is proportional to the value of the bank account. So the solution that we got was this exponentially increasing function. Okay, what, what we have here is the general version of what we just did. So rather than necessarily plugging in 0.02 for our k, we can plug in really any constant there. And in our last example, because k was positive, we had this exponential growth, as we're going to see in, in, this, in this coming example, that if that constant is less than zero, then what the function looks like is rather than an e to the power of something that's increasing, it's e to the power of something that's decreasing. So the function is going to be something more like this. So this has sort of a fundamentally different behavior. Rather than increasing without bound, we're going to be approaching some, some set value. Right? This crops up a lot when with a bunch of examples, but one of the most famous ones is Newton's law of cooling. So the general idea behind a lot of thermodynamics is that the rate of change of temperature of an object is proportional to the difference in temperature between that object and the room. So the example we're going to talk about is if I have cookies fresh out of the oven, so 170 degree cookies, and I set them out in a 70 degree room. I'm interested in how the temperature of these cookies changes over time. So what Newton's law of cooling says is that all that really matters is the difference in temperatures. Because the cookies start off 100 degrees warmer than the room, that 100 is going to be the, the governing effect. So the rate of change of cooling between these two things would be the same as the rate of change of cooling between 270 degree cookies and 170 degree room, because the difference between those two very hot things is still 100 degrees, same with our example. The function or the rate of change of this function is going to be the same in both examples. Okay, so to take this idea and put it in terms of a differential equation, we want to say that, and I'm going to, uh, that dh dt, so I'm going to use h rather than t to talk about the temperature of the cookies. This is the thing that we're at. We want to know what's the function that talks about the temperature of cookies over time. And rather than writing this as dt dt, which would be way confusing, we're calling the temperature H, just an arbitrary choice. Okay, so our dH dt, according to Newton's law of cooling, this should be proportional to the difference in the temperature of the cookies. The temperature of the cookies is H, the difference between the temperature of the cookies and the room. So as the cookies cool, the rate of change in the temperature is going to decrease. The cookies are cooling a lot faster when they're still really hot. And when they're relatively cool, they're going to be cooling at a slower rate. The, the total change in degrees per minute is going to be lower. So Newton's law of cooling just says, just says that it's proportional. There's some constant here, some k, which is analogous to our 0.02 interest rates in our previous example, this constant governing the rate of change. This 
with cooling, this typically comes, this comes from a lot of factors, including how insulated the object is, maybe something like about the airflow. There's a lot of different things that could go into this. Because this is not a physics or an engineering class, we're typically going to get this number from the phrasing of the question. We might say that the constant that goes here is negative 0.1. All right, and we'll, we'll, we'll see how that is interpreted moving forward. But anyway, this represents Newton's law of cooling because the rate of change of the temperature of the cookies is proportional to the difference in the temperature of the cookies with the temperature of the environment. So now that we have this set up, we can solve this system, we can solve this differential equation. We want to know what's the function h. So first off, there's going to be infinitely many functions of h that solve this. We want to know what those look like, and then we want to know the specific function h that meets our initial condition. At time t equals 0, the cookie is being 170 degrees. So let's solve for h. We do that with our separation of variables approach. We're going to divide this h minus 70 over. It's generally advised not to try to distribute this point 0.1. We really want to be able to divide h over. If you distribute the point 0.1 and try to add it over, then when you then try to multiply the dt over, it has to distribute in a weird way, and, and it, it, it just doesn't work. Regardless, dh over h minus 70 should be equal to negative 0.1 dt. And just like we've done in the past, we're going to integrate both sides. The left-hand side becomes ln of the inside plus c equals negative 0.1 t plus c. And as, as I've said a couple times, we could put a plus c here, but there's because we can add that number to the other side, what we really have, or subtract it to the other side, what we really have is c minus c, which isn't zero. It's any number minus any other number is still any number. We're still going to call this c. C is a catch-all to be to just say, hey, these are this is some number that goes here. Again, what we want to do is we want to solve for h. To do this, we want to exponentiate both sides. We're going to get h minus 70 is e to the power of this next step would be to add 70 to both sides and we're also going to pull the c down so as we said in the in the last video uh, just as a refresher e to a power plus another power is the same thing as e to the first power times e to the second power. So we could write this as e to the negative 0.1t times e to the c. But again, c is just some arbitrary constant. So e to the power of some arbitrary constant is also some arbitrary constant. So we're going to get rid of that. And we're just going to call that, we could call it c, but we typically want to call it something different. We're going to call it h naught. Um, which represents the initial, it's going to come in to talk about the initial condition. So this is the general form. This is the solution to the differential equation. But if we want to know what the temperature function should look like for our particular batch of cookies, that just now at t equals zero are 170 degrees, we need to know what this h naught should be. So to do that, we want to plug in. So the temperature should be 170 degrees when t is 0. So negative 0.1 times 0. This whole thing just becomes 1. And we get 170 equals 70 plus h naught. So h naught equals 100. So our solution, 
the function that we're looking for, so the solution to the differential equation is, is typically some, some function, h, which, which is a function in terms of t, is 70 plus 100 e to the negative 0.1 t. So this is the final answer. And just to, to think about what this thing looks like, we can graph what it's doing. So maybe we have some 70 there, and we have 170 up here. The general idea is that it starts at 170, and it's starting off decaying pretty fast, and then it levels out towards some asymptote that's at the room temperature. Okay, so if we, so that, that, that's what this, this particular function looks like. If our cookie started at a different, different temperature, maybe we had blue for some, some, some lower temperature cookies, maybe at time t equals zero, they were 120 degrees. We could go in and we would find a different starting, we have different starting values, we would find a different h naught, and it said our function would still have the same general behavior. It would still have the property that its rate of change of temperature is proportional to the difference in, in the temperature at, at the particular time to the room, but it just starts in a different place. So it looks a little bit different. Okay, so there's one more follow-up concept I wanna talk about, and that's this idea of a half-life. So this is particularly common when talking about radioactivity, but a half-life is the amount of time it takes for the total amount to drop by 50%. And one of the properties of exponential decay is that no matter where you start, this should be a fixed property. And, and what I mean by that is, well, there's going to be some amount of time it takes for our original batch of cookies, the, one, the ones that were 100 degrees warmer than the room, there's some amount of time that it takes to get to where they are half as much warmer than the room. In other words, when the temperature difference drops from 100 to 50, so, it goes, so the temperature of the cookies goes from 170 to 120, that amount is a fundamental property of these exponential curves. So the amount of time it takes to do this should be the same amount of time it takes, and this is where I didn't draw it all that well, but it should be the same amount of time it takes to go from 50 degrees warmer than the room to 25 degrees warmer than the room. So this is a property of exponential decay functions that this amount of time should be equal to this amount of time, and then the same thing to, to, for the temperature to drop to 12 and a half more degrees. So let's say 82.5, etc. The amount of time it takes for the temperature difference to have should be fixed. Okay, this is what I want you to work on in your groups. So I'll, I'll write up the, the question on the on the on the sheet that hopefully you've already looked at, but I want you to discuss in this particular, so first off, I want you to discuss this concept of this, this half-life, but then I also want you to work on figuring out what the half-life is for this particular set of cookies. How long does it take for these 170 degree cookies to drop to 120 degrees? What is the half-life on the temperature of these cookies.